Well, hey guys. So in keeping with the Q&A on Friday about uh, oily skin, what causes it, how to control it, I thought I would share with you guys a morning skincare routine for oily skin today. And then later this week, I'll share with you a nighttime skincare routine, including makeup removal for, um, for oily skin. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, stick around. Um, I'll be talking about uh, some of the products that I mentioned in the Q&A and kind of how I, I use them when I'm uh, dealing with my oily skin. I do have bouts of oiliness and shininess. I live in an environment that's very humid, so I am uh, quite familiar with oily skin. So with that, um, let's get started. So the first thing is I just woke up and um, I pull my hair back to, to start my day. And I uh, you know, have some shininess on my forehead and nose and sort of T-zone areas that I'm bothered by. Those are the most common areas. These are the areas on the face where the sebaceous gland density is the highest. Those are the glands on the face that produce oil. And in individuals with oily skin, some people have a genetic tendency to have larger oil glands and or produce oil at an increased rate. Um, so those are kind of the T-zone areas, if you will, uh, you know, forehead, nose, it's kind of chin area. And um, so the very first thing that I'm going to use, I'm going to talk a little bit about, and it is Dickinson's uh, Enhanced Witch Hazel, um, which I mentioned in my q and I'm going to use this to kind of mop up oil as sort of a mild astringent. And I'm going against convention in the product labeling for a variety of reasons, which I will explain. But first and foremost, what is important to know about this is that this is Witch Hazel, which is a mild and very well tolerated astringent. It can help just remove some of the excess oil on the surface of your skin without being harsh, without drying out the skin. When you look for this product, make sure you look for one that is alcohol free. You guys know, I detest alcohol-based toners. Toners have no role in skincare. They're absolutely useless. They're a marketing gimmick. Witch hazel, however, is somewhat of an exception in that it's an astringent, and the witch hazel alone is helpful in gently, gently removing residual oil, okay? And I happen to be a fan of this Dickinson's Enhanced Witch Hazel because it has aloe in it, which is likewise very well tolerating and soothing, okay? So this is very, very gentle, a very, very gentle mechanism of removing some excess oily residual um, that you may notice upon awakening um, on the T-zone, okay? And I like to do it first, okay? Despite what, what the instructions say, I like doing it first. The other tip that I will say with this is make sure you look for the fragrance-free variety. My CVS didn't happen to have it. I've got one here in my hand with, that happens to have fragrance in it. But fragrance uh, can be very irritating and, and allergenic. So in an ideal world, you would just be using plain witch hazel with perhaps aloe in it, nothing else. Thayer's makes one and Dickinson's makes one as well. I just happen to have one with fragrance in it, in it today. So the package instructions say, so the instructions say that you're supposed to wash your face and then put this on and then, you know, do whatever, like the classic steps. But I actually, I actually suggest doing the opposite and putting this on first simply to cut down on the oil in a very soothing manner and then come in and wash it off with the, with the cleanser, which I'll talk about in a moment. And the reason being, um, the more the more things you leave on your face, sitting on your face, the more things that have contact with your skin, this increases the chance for irritation coming to the skin and it just gives the, the immune system within your skin too much to do and too much to look at, okay? So the fewer things that you have left on the face at the end of your skincare routine, in my opinion, the better off you are because when you've got a bunch of stuff on your face, it's irritating and as a, as a reaction, your skin becomes red and it amps up oil production in an effort to kind of grease it on off. So I actually advocate doing something even as innocuous as a little witch hazel. I actually advocate doing this as a first step. So that's what I'm going to do first, um, just in my T-zone area. And I'm going to be using these cute clean puffs that I got from the Japanese beauty store, but you could use any kind of, you know, cotton ball or whatever. It doesn't have to be super special, but I just think these are cute. Clean puff. <laughs> this is very, very nice, and it feels good. This just feels really good first thing in the morning um, on your skin. Rosé, if you're prone to rosacea, however, even plain witch hazel is probably too um, irritating to you. 
um, and that is the mildest astringent out there. But I really like this. It, you know, kind of, it's, it's a degreasing. That, that's what I'm doing. I'm degreasing, okay? I'm just doing a gentle degreasing before cleansing um, with this in the T-zone area. And it's hydrating simultaneously. So it's not, you know, desiccating my skin like a harsh alcohol-based toner. Um, and it is a little tingly. So I'm just going to, you know, let it kind of sit on the surface of the skin for a few minutes. And that's really it. You don't need much of it. And so, you know, essentially what I've done is, is, is gently performed a degreasing step, okay? And, um, you know, this is kind of an approach that if you went into a cosmetic dermatology office for a cosmetic peel, for example, they often will perform a degreasing step uh, before doing any sort of exfoliating or peeling of, of your skin. Um, that's not the goal here in an everyday skincare routine, but the principle is the same, the degreasing step. It just cuts down on the amount of work that your cleansing has to do and uh, the less kind of scrubbing and, and that sort of thing that you would then be inclined or motivated to do. Okay, and so for the second step, I'm going to rinse this off with the CeraVe Renewing SA Cleanser. This is the cleanser that I um, was talking about in the, my Q&A that I like. Alternatively, if you tolerate it well, you could also use the Neutrogena Oil-Free 2% Salicylic Acid Face Wash. They're both great in my opinion, but some people find this one more irritating. This one is nice because it has niacinamide in it, which will combat redness. It has hyaluronic acid in it, which is hydrating as it, as it cleanses. And it has ceramides in it, which are also fantastic in, in basically just combating the battle of cleansing, okay? The salicylic acid in here, in a wash, um, will nicely concentrate in the oil glands and kind of help to uh, reduce oil, if you will. And so it's a great product for somebody with oily skin, even though it says normal skin. I mean, who has normal skin, right? That's just like... Pfft. Um, this should not break you out, and it tends to not be too, too drying either, although we will follow it up with a moisturizer. Okay, so I'm just going to wash off the witch hazel with this, and I'll show you how I do that. I'm just going to use lukewarm tap water. All right, and now you just need to use your finger pads. It's a bad idea to use those pore scrubs, anything that's harsh or abrasive. Um, I think folks with oily skin get tempted by those things, um, but what ends up happening but what ends up happening is that that's really irritating to the surface of your skin and as a result, your skin makes more oil. Um, so I, I, I say no to that. Um, it tends to not work in your favor. It's far, far better to use just gentle circular motions with your finger pads. That's all you need to dislodge any cells that may have turned over in the night. And, you know, we had that nice degreasing step in the beginning, and so now the salicylic acid is getting into the pores and um, getting into those oil-bearing surfaces where it can really work its magic. And um, that is it. You may want to let that sit on there for, you know, a few minutes as well and let the salicylic acid kind of get into the oil glands. <clears throat> um, just a few minutes. So now I'm just going to wash it off. All right, now, one thing that um, people with oily skin sometimes are a little bit um, apprehensive to do is to go moisturizing, but it's actually one of the most important steps. And so, to get going with the moisturizer after I've just cleansed my face in a gentle, non-aggressive manner, I'm still losing water from my skin, so I've got a wet face right now. And I'm a fan of using a hyaluronic acid-based uh, gel cream to the face as a way underneath the moisturizer, as you guys know from my everyday skincare routines. In the past, I've used this Neutrogena Hydra Boost Gel Cream. The extra dry skin form is fantastic. This is fine for oily skin, fine for acne prone skin, should not break you out, does not have fragrance, very, very well tolerated. You don't need very much. That is empty, and I've also been using, so instead I've been using the um, Hadalabo Skin Plumping Gel Cream, which also is fragrance free and I find is really, really nice likewise and very, very similar to the Hydra Boost, perhaps a little better in its hydrating property. And I just put a little tiny 
like dollop. You don't need much, honestly. I, I feel like the Hadalabo one goes a lot further than the Neutrogena one. And you just kind of want to coat the surface of your skin with it um, in a nice film. Um, and don't forget your neck too, okay? So that just kind of, um, what this does is it gloms onto some of that water, not oil. It's glomming onto water, not oil. See, people think this ha this is gonna make you greasy. No, it's not. It's gonna make you hydrated because it's holding onto water. It has nothing to do with oil at this point. Um, it has everything to do with keeping water in the skin so it stays plump and hydrated. Um, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with grease or oil, okay? It has nothing to do with your sebaceous gland. In fact, it, it helps the sebaceous gland calm down and chill out, okay? Um, so it's good in that manner. Um, the hyaluronic acid is fine left on the skin. Like I said, this doesn't have fragrance or a lot of additives. If you pick one of these, however, that has a lot of irritating substances in it, you know, it, it could be too much left on your skin. Again, the less that you leave on the skin, the better off you are. But one thing that needs to be put on the skin copiously and left on and, and reapplied is your sunscreen. Um, you know, and make sure you check out my sunscreen Q&As because uh, I address a lot of the caveats and, and shortcomings and different types of sunscreens and which ones are good for oily skin and all that kind of thing. Um, everyone is different in terms of what sunscreens they like. I mean, you know, I can recommend ones that are generally very well tolerated for oily skin and invariably they will break somebody there out, out. But in general, the CeraVe AM combination sunscreen that I use is a great one. It has zinc in it so it goes on a little bit um, thicker and wider um, and oily skin types for you know may not like this. Um, so you may find that you tolerate chemical sunscreens well, and honestly I find that those blend in very, very well. They do have shortcomings, which I discussed in my um, sunscreen Q&As, but they're fine to use. And this one by Cetaphil is, is respectable. Here, I'll show you. So that's what I'm going to be using today. It's the Cetaphil Oil Control Moisturizer for Acne Prone Skin. Um, this is formulated in such a manner that it should not break you out. Um, and it's a chemical sunscreen. So I put a teaspoon on to my entire face. Um, and again, this has nothing to do with oil production. This is moisture and sun protection. You want to make sure you get your neck and your forehead. Don't neglect your forehead, guys, and don't neglect your ears either, okay? So just really get that in there. Ah, oh, feels good to do rub my sunscreen. Okay, we got it all in. Like one. You see, it went in. This one goes in like, like pretty well, right? Looks good. And then I like to come in with a tinted sunscreen on top, mostly for my makeup purposes, but just to have an extra layer. Do you know that some of the um, some of the physical sunscreens can make some of the chemical sunscreens a little wimpier, but together they, you know, do form a, a nice barrier. So I, you know, use this every day. It's the Elta MD. Um, here. The Ulta MD uh, UV Physical Broad Spectrum Lightly Tinted uh, Transparent Zinc. Um, but some other ones that, it, you know, this one is a little bit pricey, I guess, but I find that it lasts a long time and it goes on really well. Um, but I think. Another good option, maybe even one that you might like better if you're an oily person, is the Coats Face one. Uh, this is the, um, it's a mineral sunscreen. This is the lightly tinted one. If you're a fairer person, make sure you get the lightly tinted one. If not, they have a darker one that, that works well with dark skin types. This one has definitely more of a matte finish. Another mineral sunscreen that's on the pricier side uh, that is tinted that has a matte finish is the La Roche Posay one. This is SPF, uh, this is the Anti-Helios 50 Mineral, um, SPF 50, I guess. Um, this is a decent, this is a good one, it's fine. It's a little pricey for what it offers. It may be slightly better in Europe because their formulations are different. And I think it's more affordable in Europe here for whatever reason, it's like insanely expensive. It's like. <laughs> And then a usual for me is just to come in with a CeraVe healing ointment just to my lips. It's like a lip protectant. Um, this has nothing to do with 
targeting oil on skin it's just what I do the only thing other than sunscreen that I wear and as far as like makeup is the is the Maybelline Colossal mascara this is the uh, this is the not this is the regular one they have a waterproof one as well but I don't like that and so yeah that's basically it so yeah, that's everything that I do in you know, morning skincare routine incorporating you know, a degreasing step with a mild and well-tolerated witch hazel astringent. Um, again, avoid alcohol-based toners. If you can find this without fragrance, even better. I choose to not leave it on my skin because the fewer things that are left on the skin, the less room for error as far as what your immune system has to do on its to-do list for the day. Um, so I think it appreciates that. I followed up with a salicylic acid face wash that's likewise hydrating this one by CeraVe uh, for oil uh, you know cutting down on oils this also is good for enlarged pores acne um, and removing any uh, you know skin cells that have turned over from the day and kind of imparting a brightening effect this won't amp up oil production um, and it's very well tolerated and then come on to a wet face with a, a fragrance-free hyaluronic acid gel cream either the hot lava one or the Neutrogena one then I followed up with sunscreen, and then I followed up with tinted sunscreen for an extra layer of sun protection, and, you know, my makeup, mascara, and my CeraVe lip balm. So that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Later this week, I'll be posting a nighttime skincare routine showing you guys um, how, I, uh, how I incorporate that uh, benzoyl peroxide mask that I mentioned in my Q&A in a nighttime skincare routine targeting oily uh, surfaces of the skin along with Differin and uh, how I take my makeup off even though I don't wear much makeup but a, a way to remove makeup for oily skin and that involves oils. I'll talk also in that video a little bit more about oils for oily skin because I, um, uh, I know you guys have a lot of questions about that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.